nation where every human being could be free and have something to say about how they were governed. But not only did the Patriots win their freedom, but at the Treaty of Paris in 1783, the U.S. territory doubled in size as Britain gave the new nation all of the land to the east of the Mississippi River. And though many signers of that great declaration paid a high price, others reaped a great reward. Two of the signers became presidents. Ten became U.S. congressmen. Nineteen judges. Sixteen became governors. And dozens of others held other high political office. Not to mention the enduring place they hold in our history. The Patriots, they made the pledge, paid the price, and reaped the rewards. Freedom, a new land, new country, a bright future, a new beginning. And now, a sharp break with after the rain by Gord Lang, and when we return, we will cover the Christian. We too made a bold declaration. We'll be right back. When the night surrounds me, and I think it will be.
of the hope that it brings and the love that never dies. That's as sure as the sunrise each morning, announcing the breaking of day. As sure as the rainbow caressing the sky after the storm. If you are here today and you call yourself a Christian, you too have made a bold declaration. I hope you realize what a commitment you have made. Do you remember the day when you stood before the body of Christ, when you came forward and confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you stood before the body proclaiming your desire to be a Christian, to be united with Christ? having been bathed in his blood, courageously announcing that nothing but absolute independence from the shackles of sin and the ways of this world would be acceptable. In doing this, you are making a bold statement and a bold declaration. You were at that time pledging your allegiance, your devotion, your loyalty, your dedication, your commitment, your very life to the Lamb of God, to Jesus Christ. Understand that you were at that time proclaiming what Paul proclaimed in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in, the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, it is a very bold declaration to say that you will no longer live for yourself, that you will no longer seek your will for your life, that you will no longer live for the things of the world, power, pleasure, popularity, and possessions, but rather that you will seek God's will for your life, seeking to do what pleases Him far and above what pleases you, declaring that He comes first. Yes, it is a very bold declaration to say that you will live for Him who died for you. And if you are here today and a Christian, you have made that declaration. This declaration is as bold and as powerful as the one Joshua made in Joshua chapter 24 and verses 14 and 15. You remember that one, don't you? God's people had conquered the promised land and were beginning to settle down. And then, according to Joshua 24, verse 14 and 15, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites 
in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When you came to Christ, when you pledge your allegiance to the Lamb, you were making a very bold declaration. And like the Patriots, you must also pay a high price. It's one thing to make a bold declaration in the comfort of a church building, but it is quite another to live up to it, to pay the price, to fulfill that declaration on the battlefields of our daily lives. Most times, saying words is the easy part. The actions are much tougher. You know, on that day when Joshua made his bold declaration, he was not alone. Others also did. They said the same words within the comfort of the assembly. What a declaration by the nation of Israel. They were pledging their allegiance to God, but tragically, it didn't last long. All you have to do is turn the page over to the book of Judges, and you will see recorded how God's people quickly turned away from Him. Today in Christian America, we find that not everyone is committed to the war effort. Not everyone who claimed Jesus as their Lord one day in the assembly has lived up to it in their daily lives. Yes, some are just like the Tories and are still loyal to the enemy, to sin and Satan. The final reason our war is hard is because others are like that one-third of the colonists who are unconcerned about the outcome of the war. They are indifferent. They are uninvolved. Now they may not directly hinder the war effort, and they will certainly want to take part in any benefits, but they will not join in. They will not leave their comfort and safety. They simply watch and critique from the sidelines. Let's make no mistake about it. There is a high price to pay to fulfill our declaration that Jesus is our Lord. Our Lord demands total, radical, unswerving allegiance, and this is no secret. Jesus made this clear to us when he walked the earth. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 26, and he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged? if he gains the whole world and loses himself or be cast away. For whosoever shall be shamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Luke chapter 14 verses 26 to 27 if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. In Luke chapter 14 verse 33, so likewise Whosoever he be of you that forsake it and not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple.